Welcome to the Genealogy Gems Podcast, providing quick and innovative ways to make the absolute most out of your research time and creative ideas for sharing and displaying your family history. I'm your host, Lisa Louise Cook. glad to see all of you here. I mean, what could be better than sugar, prizes, and genealogy? It doesn't get much better than that. I've been excited about this all day long, and I have to tell you one of the reasons I've been so excited about it is, is because when I record my podcast, I'm usually in my little room by myself, wondering if anybody's out there. <laughs> and uh, thankfully, they are. There's lots of folks out there. But I don't always get a chance to mingle with you and get some of the feedback and, and talk about what we're doing. So this is a lot of fun, and, and we have lots of people listening. It's interesting. We have a room full of people here who are enjoying yummy desserts, but you have people in Australia and Romania and the UK and Canada and about every state in the Union listening to you eat, okay? And listening to the show, and, and that's really the fun of it. I was talking about this in one of my classes earlier today, that um, every once in a while when I have a challenge, like I had some music I was trying to identify, I just played it on the podcast, and next thing you know is a, a retired piano teacher from Illinois writes in and tells me the name of the song. And it's just really cool the way we can collaborate, and for me that is one of the most uh, enjoyable parts of doing the show. And one of the reasons I love doing these live shows, and Lacey and I have done a couple of them now, is um, we get a chance to talk to some great experts. Holly does an amazing job pulling together people from across the country who come and teach your classes all day, and then I scout them out and try to find them and, and talk to them about what their expertise is to bring it to the show. So that's what we're going to be doing here tonight. But first, I wanted to just double check and see, raise your hand if you have listened to a podcast before. Oh, we have a lot of hands going up. Okay, and those of you who've, who went, what's a podcast? Okay, we had a couple, great. And, a, and you were still brave to show up and find out. <laughs> Podcasts are fun. And as Lacey mentioned, it's pre-recorded genealogy radio, essentially. And then one of the other things I was wondering, because... I feel so lucky. I'm a, not a native, but I live here in the uh, East Bay, at not too far from Pleasanton, and I'm absolutely thrilled that Holly brought um, Family History Expos down to Pleasanton. But how many of you is how many of you have never been to a conference of any type before for genealogy? A good number, maybe half. So this is fun. Are you finding that it? Uh, you're, you're learning some new things. Is it, is it been worth the trip out? I see a lot of heads going up and down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as much as we enjoy doing our genealogy and our jammies, and don't we, at 4 o'clock in the morning, um, there is something that happens here, synergy-wise, that just doesn't happen anywhere else. And I think that's one of the most exciting things. But, you know, technology is changing a lot of things. Certainly, how we get our information now that we keep talking about blogs and, and podcasts and there's all these websites and the URLs keep changing and all that, that kind of thing. But something else that has changed a lot is magazines and newspapers and books. Have you noticed that? Somebody came up to my desk at the exhibit hall and said that he had heard something about they were selling more e-books on Amazon than they were paper books. Amazing. And so it seems really, really timely that uh, we are going to be covering tonight what we are, and that is the new wave of uh, genealogy magazines, and one of the, the real pioneers in this area is one called Shades of the Departed. That sounds like it's in time for Halloween, doesn't it? <laughs> but it is a beautiful magazine, and we have a couple of uh, folks here who contribute to that. So I want to get right to it and get into our first interview. Um, you know, my first guest, he kind of describes himself as having a, a very checkered past. But what he really means is that there's a wide range of um, expertise and uh, experience that he's had, but also a wide range of ancestors that he's been um, researching. And 
what's wonderful is, is that he brings that research and that expertise that he's developed over the years to a blog. Now, I have to ask this because I was wondering about this. Raise your hand if you have never read a blog post before. Just a couple. Okay, Craig, you're going to have a job to do to explain a little bit more about a, a blog. But it really is the next wave, you know, of getting our information because we have to stay educated. I was saying this again in a class today. Boy, if we're walking around saying we have a brick wall, we are not devoting a large enough percentage of time to our ongoing education. So with that, let me introduce to you a very um, fun and experienced researcher. He is the author of the Genia Blogi blog, and that is Mr. Craig Manson. And let me tell you, it took me a while to make sure I was saying Genia Blogi right. And I want to hear the origins of the name of this blog. Well, it's a made-up word, and it was sort of intended to evoke something vaguely French and something vaguely bloggy and <laughs> something vaguely genealogical. And so, it, so we got a vague word, Genia Blogi. Out of that. We vaguely understand that. Okay. Um, so answer the question, what is a blog? What is, the, what is the origin of the word blog? Where did that come from? Well, the origin is web log is, is what it originally stood for, and that got shortened to blog. And it's where people post what they have done uh, some in, in various ways, or they write a column, or they tell people how to do things or give them tips. And, of course, Mr. G Genia Blogger himself, Thomas McEntee, is here, and he's going around tomorrow talking about blogs and social networks. So if you haven't uh, read a blog yet, you need to get to one of Thomas's classes on blogs and social networks because it is, it is the thing that's going on right now. Don't you find it's almost like you can go out there and search for you know, almost any topic within a blog, and it's almost like creating your own custom newspaper, but you're the editor. You get to pick the stories that you're bringing to yourself that mean the most to you. That's one of the, the attractions of it for me, that um, it's, it's a publish-it-yourself yeah. uh, item that can reach potentially hundreds of thousands or even millions of people, uh, depending upon how you do it, and, and you learn the tricks of uh, optimizing your audience and so forth, and you can reach everybody around the world with your, your blog. You don't have to be the New York Times anymore to have an influence over what goes on in part of the world or all, all of the world. That's been the exciting thing to me for podcasting. You and I both have a little bit of radio in our background. I did a little bit of radio in college. I was the only person dumb enough to take the 3 a.m. shift. But, um, but the, the interesting thing is now that a mom who raised three kids in the East Bay area can from her home basically have a radio show internationally. And you are reaching readers internationally and talking about your favorite subject. You know, that, that's exactly right. We are in a new era media-wise. And even the major media have gone to blogs. If you look at any major newspaper, a lot of it consists of blogs these days. And a lot of the content is what they call user-generated content. And so, we, to me, I'm a lawyer, and, and I see this as a fulfillment of the great promise of the First Amendment, that anybody can say anything, anytime, anywhere, and either develop an audience or not develop an audience based upon what they've said and whether people like it or not. Absolutely. And the audience decides who gets read and, and who's popular and that type of thing. Well, before we get into Shades of the Departed, because to me that is a really exciting part of what we're talking about tonight, what are you trying to accomplish with the Genia Blogi blog? Well, like everything, I probably overreach, and I'm doing a little bit of everything. Genealogists I... don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, certainly not. I, I, uh, I give some research tips. I tell some stories. I review some products, um, I bring some news, a uh, little bit of everything. Uh, for example, right now on the blog, uh, we're on a grand genealogical journey across the country, stopping virtually at places that where I have research interests. And we talk about the towns and we talk about the research resources that are available in that town. And uh, uh, the other thing that I do with it is that we, we practice a little law there too. Uh, we do. Uh, we talk about copyright and things of that nature and intellectual property. 
And uh, that's a, those are some of the most popular columns. And, you know, copyright was one of the reasons I kind of tuned in to Craig and his work was because that seems to become a very is a big issue very quickly is because we're finding information, we're downloading information, we're sharing information, and then we have to figure out what the rules are. And some of that is kind of the wild west of the rules, but some of it is definitely based solidly in the law, right? Right. And the thing about being a blogger is that you are both a content user and a content producer. Mm -hmm. And so copyright can cut both ways for you if you don't pay attention to the rules and uh, you can find yourself in some sticky situations. Well, that's why we love the fact that you're a lawyer and a genealogist, and you kind of help guide us. And you can see Craig's blog right there. It's at blog.geniablogi.com. I liked the fact that you were doing that series because it, it felt like we were kind of going along with you. Right. Don't you find that um, being able to, to do the posts like that, that that's a really good use for just the way blogs are, are set up? It, essentially, it is a website. You know, we talk about what's the difference. And each time you post the differences, the most current item is at the top and everything else moves down. That seems to be one of the differences to most websites. What gave you the idea of having a series like that where they would kind of follow along with you? Well, I had wanted to uh, write about each of the cities uh, originally, and I thought that uh, this would be a good way to, to do it instead of writing about them individually scattered throughout the year, make it into a grand journey uh, it's a journey that I'd like to take one of these days, you know, all across the country, stopping at various places and picking up bits of information and research along the way. So um, that's, that's what inspired it. Wonderful. Okay, well now we're going to go on to this new frontier, which is really the digital online magazine. And I, we all love our paper copies. I'm going to hand this to you. And I'm going to go up there and start flipping some pages and show them how that works. But I'd love, while I'm traveling up there, for you to tell me what is Shades of the Departed and where they would find it. Well, Shades of the Departed is a online magazine. And the, the creative force behind Shades of the Departed is one of our blogging friends, Footnote Bailey, who lives in Washington State. And fortunately, he couldn't make it down here today. And she is a tremendously talented extremely creative woman, and uh, she invented Shades of the Departed. And she had a good sense to involve several of us as collaborators. That's one thing that I find is, is very interesting about these days on the web, and especially in genealogy. Collaboration is the way to get things done. And so there are a number of contributors to uh, Shades of the Departed. Uh, some of them are here tonight. Denise Levin, who writes under the name now it'll be dreadful to write short fiction. <laughs> and uh, Cherie Finley, who we'll hear from later on, uh, and she writes uh, The Year That Was. Uh, George Jeter is another popular <coughs> one who writes uh, about uh, retouching photographs. Uh, Maureen Taylor sometimes appears. And uh, um, Denise Olson writes about technical matters, tech matters. In fact, if you haven't read Denise Olson, you haven't read about genealogical tech. You need to read Denise Olson's, uh, both her columns and the state of the department and her regular stuff at Moultrie Creek. Um, and I know I'm forgetting a bunch of people making sure we Well, we're going to look at the editor list because here's what he's talking about. This is Shades of the Departed. So I went to shadesofthedeparted.com. And you see, boy, I just this thing. Um, you'll see these magazine covers along the right-hand column, and you can click on any of them. So I just clicked on one of the most recent ones. This was the Civil War. This is amazing. Now, if you hover your mouse here, you can zoom in and zoom out, and I know that I can just turn the pages. Isn't that something? I love the way that looks. And then as you come in, you can say, okay, I want to zoom in on that and explore the page. So here are some of these contributors that he was talking about. Uh, Penelope Dreadful and, and George Jeter. And then, Craig, tell us, who decides what these articles are? I mean, this is the perfect example of genealogists all over the country getting together, and I know Footnote, Footnote Maven really pulls it together so graphically 
But who decides what is going to get written about in each issue? Well, originally, as we started off, uh, everyone was writing their own column and picking their own uh, themes and, and so forth, although they were all focused around photography. And it still focuses a lot around photography. And now we've gone to themes for each issue. So we had the Civil War theme uh, in March or April of uh, last spring. Um, this past issue that just came out is on the morning, and uh, it, it kind of depends more or less on the individual to come up with something to fit the theme. And some themes, uh, like morning, uh, uh, lend themselves to different treatment by different people. And you will see uh, a wide range of variety with respect to the morning issue. Um, I wrote, for example, about uh, a column called Death on the on the record, or death of the record, that talks about the death of obituaries and how obituaries have changed over the years. Uh, there are uh, various other takes on mourning throughout the issue by the different authors. And I would think um, you probably aren't dealing with that six to eight month editorial calendar that some of the paper magazines used to have to do. So you can really respond more quickly, can't you, to get articles in there? Well, we can, but you know, most of us are slackers. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have a, we do have about a six month editorial calendar. Oh, you do. It's up to us to try and meet that deadline, and some of us do it better than others. Well, here's one from you. This is overlooked, but not looked over. Images in black from the Civil War. Tell us a little bit about this article. This was uh, in our Civil War issue. The theme was the Civil War. And uh, I started wondering about how many photographs there were of black troops in the Civil War era. So I went out to find them. And uh, this is what I, I turned up. That uh, while there's a lot written about black troops, the photographs are few and far between black troops in the Civil War. And at the Library of Congress and in the National Archives, I was able to turn up a number of these photographs. And uh, it fit the theme, and uh, I wanted to write about it and give a little bit of the history as well. Boy, that's where you really see the footnote Maven's impact, I think, is it's such a visual, beautiful magazine. It is. And you bring it to life. The way she laid out some of my photographs was astounding to me. I, I, she laid them out in ways that I had never thought about before. Really? And, and the, the article just came out beautifully. It has, has just about everything she touches literally turns to literary or visual goals. She, she's that talented. So tell us, here you're doing this really innovative work. And I have to ask, do you ever have time for anything that's not genealogy? And what would Craig Manson be doing if he wasn't working on genealogy or writing these articles? Well, I think I, I mentioned to you one time that I decided what I finally wanted to be, and that was Lisa Louise Cook. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you wish for. <laughs> if I weren't doing genealogy, and I can't imagine not doing genealogy, I'd probably be doing radio. He has an amazing voice, don't you think he'd be perfect for radio? <laughs> I know, I keep talk, trying to talk him into doing segments on the show. Well, I'll do one one of these days. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you being here and, and sharing a little bit about this whole new thing. You can imagine if you had your laptop, your netbook, your iPad, this could be a lot of fun to be flipping through at the airport, wouldn't it? And watching those pages turn and, and how your words really bring all of those images to light. It's, it, it is visually stunning. It's a tremendously aesthetic experience. And, and the history that you learn about some of the subjects in the photographs are, are fascinating as well. And if you haven't seen Shades of the Departed, it's something that you just can't miss. And uh, you will you'll be delighted and amused and uh, sometimes depressed, but always come <laughs> away with a with the feeling that you've learned something and that you've had a great experience when you've read Shades of the Departed. Well, I always learn something, and I always come away feeling like I had a great experience when I visit with you. Thank you so much for being again on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. We enjoy giving things away, don't we? Bruce Busby, would you come up and join me? Bruce really helps make this podcast possible. Ruth's magic, he is the man. 
you've seen him in the exhibit hall. Give him a big round. Thank you for being here. I keep dragging him up on these stages, and he's so game. Boy, how long have you been doing Roots Magic? When did it come out? Uh, we released Roots Magic in 2001. We were doing a program called Family Origins for a lot of years before that. So we've been doing it about 20, 20 something years now. And I know that uh, you had a big revision this last year. Lots of really cool new things going on in uh, Roots Magic. I, I don't know, people ask me, but I'm asking, where did you sleep? Um, I don't sleep, actually. <laughs> Yeah, we released version 4, which was a total rewrite. We completely did it from scratch, and it took about three, three and a half years to do the rewrite on that one. Wow. And it's amazing. And the nice thing is that Bruce is always out here at the expos, the conferences, and he's getting our input about what works and what we need and what we're looking for, and you're always incorporating that. And I know that you came with a boatload of arm full of goodies that we are going to give away, so what do you got? We have a copy of Bruce Magic 4. Uh, along with the book, we have a copy of Personal Story, and we have a copy of Family Atlas. So we have three of our products. We we actually have a fourth one we could give away. It's Family Reunion and Organizer, but you know I'll leave that up to you guys. Whoever wins, if they're going to have a reunion, it's helpful. If you're not, it's <laughs> My question. <laughs> well, let's do it first. Here, Lacey, pull a number for us for the Roots Magic, the program, and the book. Get those blue tickets out that they gave you. Five, six, six, five, two, nine. And we have there it is. We have a winner. Let's take it down to it. Congratulations. Okay, now, believe it or not, this is not all they do. Tell us what Family Atlas is all about. Okay, Family Atlas is a genealogy mapping program. Uh, so what it does is it imports the data from your genealogy program. It's not limited to just Roots Magic. It works with any of them or a GEDCOM. And it lets you plot the events from your GEDCOM or your genealogy data on a world-based map. And so you can put your own custom markers. You can create custom maps, add pictures, add text, migration lines, and then save those uh, maps as PDF or, or graphics files that you can use them in reports or things like that. Excellent. Okay. That sounds good. All right, pull a number. Five, six, six, five, six, two. Right in the front row, the man in red. <laughs> okay, we got one more. I love this one. Personal Historian. Okay, Personal Historian is a program to help you uh, organize and put together your personal history. So instead of just sitting at your word processor, typing and hoping you remember to put everything, the personal story you write individual stories in your life or in the life of whoever you're doing your personal history for, and it organizes them in a timeline of stories. You can filter them, you can categorize them, do all that kind of organization, and then when you're ready, you can say, okay, publish my personal history. And it looks like you've been working for hours and hours and hours and hours and does so much of work for you. Okay, Lisa, well, so who's gonna be publishing their personal history? Five, six, six, five, five, seven. because she belongs for the California Genealogical Society. Congratulations. Thank you. Bruce, thank you so much. Because, um, you know, when I went to him and I said, would you be interested in, in supporting and, and sponsoring a podcast? He's just like, yeah. And it's been awesome. I love doing it. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Well, our other guest tonight is a... Um, First generation Californian, and her roots go back to Kansas, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, and North Carolina, but she currently is a professional genealogist and historical researcher. She's been doing this for over 15 years, and her specialty is Northern California, so you know who to talk to if you're looking for help in Northern California. But she's also a very well-known blogger. She does the Educated Genealogist blog, and of course she's a contributing author to Shades of the Departed. Please welcome Sherry Fenley. Wear the down short here. skirt, see? Oh, good job. That's right, I know. All right, I know. I told you, tell us yourself. No, I didn't. No, no cleavage, no long skirt, yeah. And we're all coordinated. Okay, 
Sherry, why is called the Educated Genealogist, your blog? Um, because... The reason I named it that is because I, t I devoted myself to my genealogical education. And so I intended it to be, which is never ending, by the way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And what it now is, is I'm hoping you know, that they realize, I try to promote genealogical education. Lately, it hasn't been, it's been more of a satire, satire, uh, as being a, being a smart ass, yeah. basically. <laughs> it, it comes through. I know yeah, what you're talking yeah. about. Okay. <laughs> well, and, and I asked Sherry, because you, you read her stuff and you're just rolling on the floor. I mean, if you feel like you're hitting your head against a brick wall or something, just go to her blog and read <laughs> something. I, Sherry, now it's, well, it's almost Halloween time, but we're coming up on the holidays. And you had a hysterical blog post, and I just asked her to just come and read it to you. So you kind of can hear what's out there, because this is fun stuff. The very first edition of my quest to establish a new family Christmas tradition. Every day I learn something new. However, my latest discovery has taken me a week to learn. Trying to introduce a new Christmas tradition to my family is not as rewarding as I thought it would be. I thought that the blah blah string of lights that get thrown up on the gutter every year needed some revamping. So, being the educated type of person I am, I went and got several books on how to decorate the outside of your home. They were bursting at the seams with all kinds of advice, hints, and tips. Whatever you decide, it says, your Christmas decorating style should be one that's uniquely yours. It should express the feelings you have for this particular day. I took that for code to mean, it's your house, you can do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> After much thought, I decided that the roof of my house would be my showcase. The wonderful world of Christmas, life-size everything, lots and lots and lots of lights. All I was going to need was lots and lots of huge sheets of styrofoam, a glue gun, and a couple extension cords. Let me share what I have learned. Steak knives do not cut through styrofoam like butter. Garbage cans should not be used in place of a ladder to climb onto the roof. <laughs> it does not have to be raining to make a roof slippery. Foggy weather works just as well. After careful consideration, Frosty the Snowman should be placed at least 10 foot away from the baby Jesus. <laughs> but on the other hand, he doesn't clash too bad when you put him with the, in with the three wise men. <laughs> My pink wellies do not have quite enough tread on them to obtain the traction required to keep me upright and stationary on the roof. I've made a note of this and will procure some official roof climbing shoes as soon as I can find a pink pair in size 4. <laughs> and if anyone were to ask me how far a 5 foot 1 inch female weighing just about none of your business can be <laughs> launched across the yard after falling 3 feet from the roof and bouncing off the garbage can that was used instead of a ladder, I believe I can give you the correct answer. After my family heard what they now describe as a bottle rocket gone bad, they came rushing outside to find a twisted pink of pink wellies and styrofoam and me trying to explain the horror of it all. My middle son tells me not to move. He rushes into the house and comes back with a tape measure. Forty feet, he yells to everyone, and he is certain I have set a new world's record. I'm not giving up, and I hope to have my rooftop masterpiece completed before Christmas Day. At the very least, my grandson should make a hefty profit from the tickets he's been selling to his classmates. <laughs> Yesterday, 22nd graders were on my front lawn waiting for me to bounce off the garbage can. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it goes at Camp Finley. That's an everyday occurrence. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I so identified with that post because, as Hollywell knows, at the very first expo I ever came to, I cr promptly climbed up on a chair and I was trying to get a wonderful video view and I ended up coming crashing down in the middle of, you know, 800 <laughs> genealogists and um, I just really could appreciate what she went through. But So it's amazing to me that you have time for something besides genealogy. Oh, but really, it was the family tradition that tied in. Well, I was trying to establish some new yeah. ones, you know, and uh, seeing as how we didn't have any to begin with, I'm just trying to... <laughs> then my family's not real cooperative when it, when it comes to uh, family tradition things. They still 
still roll their eyes and they glaze over. Yeah, yeah. Now, what do they think of all this blogging that you're doing? Do they know what you're in oh, there in your all, office doing? Oh, my boys are mortified. <laughs> I'm not allowed to use their real names. I'm not. <laughs> um, yeah, they, uh, they t- they, they're mean boys. They tell me, yeah, to start grow up and act my age. And, um, but otherwise, I think, it's, I think that as long as whatever makes me happy. You yeah. Know. Well, and what struck me too was that was so beautifully crafted, and, and the words. <laughs> well, how much time are you devoting to your work, not only with the educated genealogist, but then now you're writing for Shades? Yes, I am. And uh, Maven is a is a taskmaster. Yeah. Yes, she is. Crack that whip. She's um, but she's a joy to work with, and I'm so I'm 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 very proud to be a part of of Shades. Um, it's. It's some of my better work, I think, you know, and I, I just, being a part of it is, um, um, just thrills me to death, I think. I, the column I do is not uh, quite as wordy as uh, some of the others, but uh, I try to pick out interesting events that happened in a certain year that might have affected your ancestor at, you know, at that point in history. Well, and let's look at an example of that. If you click on the, um, just exit out of our PowerPoint and you go down to Internet Explorer, You'll be back on Shades. And you had an article in here, I think it was a few more pages down, about you picked a year, didn't you, and just kind of profile that year in history? Right, right. This, But for this particular issue, this was the Civil War issue. So mm-hmm. I chose the year 1865, oh. at the end of the Civil War. Perfect. And where are all these wonderful images coming from that were incorporated into your article? Some of them come from the Library of Congress. Um, some of them come from university libraries. Where else do I get them from? Uh, Wiki, Wiki Media Commons. Mm-hmm. Um, that's basically, you know, that's, I think, more time-consuming is looking for just the right photograph to put right. on there. Right. Yeah. Once you have your topic, now, are you pitching a topic to your editor, the footnote maven, or is she coming to you and, and saying, I'd really like you to cover this year? No, she's been quite, quite uh, um, generous with me on picking whatever year I want, except for this particular issue. You know, she wanted me to choose one that was within that the Civil War time frame. Yeah. Actually, you know, that time frame is more difficult to find images of, so um, right. I chose the, the ending years. You know, what really has struck me about it, as I've seen Shades of the Departed evolve, is that here are, again, these people, and you're scattered around. You come from various walks of life. Yes, we do. You're kind of like me. You've been raising families, and you've been, you know, doing the everyday stuff. And yet, you're part of this, basically, national, international magazine. And there's really no difference, you know, uh, as far as people accessing it and reading it and getting oh, to no. know your work. No, absolutely not. Anybody and could do it, right? Anybody can do it. If, if it's, you know, I lurked on blogs for a long time. I, Explain I, lurking. I, I am a lurker. <laughs> One of those that uh, um, just would, you know, read the blogs but not participate, not leave any comments, or um, um, they never knew you were there. That's right. I yes. stealth, stealth the blogger, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it took me a while, and then you know, I just, I, it, Randy Siever asked me to uh, to uh, guest post on his blog, oh, great. and that was that was enough to get me, you know, that this is okay. I can do this. This is. Mm-hmm. And let's talk for a second, because again, we had some people who were new to blogs, and I think you just brought up a, such a critical part of the whole thing. It's not just, oh, I'm going to be a writer now, or it's not, oh, I'm just going to pick a couple blogs I like and, and read them. What is the benefit in commenting and going down and scrolling to the bottom of the post and reading the comments and then chiming in as well? Lately, I pay, I've been picking what I want to write about um, is what's something that hasn't been hashed over over and over and over again you know or or finding it the same thing then but putting a different out a different spin on it the comments are 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 very helpful not only is it you know the pat on the head and the pat on the back which is it's just encouraging you know to keep to keep writing but the um the comments help me decide what um is important to the people that are reading very Seldom does, does does a post go by that someone doesn't let me know what they think. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I love it too because oftentimes somebody will be talking on a topic and then somebody will chime in who knows something about it and they live somewhere else and, and it starts to kind of evolve and you can learn quite a bit. So you were talking about it keeps you writing. 
Um, what else keeps you writing and what do you see in your future? Are you going to keep doing this? Oh, well, I'll continue with Shades until they, until they throw me out. <laughs> so, this last issue might. I, I, uh, it was a very serious morning issue and you know, Queen Victoria with the poker puppies. I'm not quite sure that that's um, Yeah, it was supposed to be about mourning the dead, and here you had Queen Victoria in well, like a, what do you call it, a black velvet poster or something. Well, it was, it, the year was 1871, mm-hmm. and in that year, um, the um, ambassador to the to United, uh, I guess it was England still at the time, Kate was taught Queen Victoria how to play poker that year, and it became one of her very, very favorite games, and I could not, for the life of me, find you know, a picture. So I took the famous picture of the dogs playing poker and just inserted Queen Victoria. Um, and she's, you know... A little creative history, no problem. That's right, that's right. Um, you know, and my angle was she always wore her widow's weeds after yeah. her husband died. So there's the She morning. was in mourning! Yeah. Yeah. Got it, here. Yeah. <laughs> This is so much fun, and I think that's what I, I wanted to share her work with you because I think it's so important to have fun. If we're not having fun, oh, how are we going to keep doing this? Oh, the people are, you know, it, 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 it's, it's serious. You know, I guess, you, you know, genealogy is a serious business, but, you know, it's... It, <laughs> I just can't do it. I have to have fun. <laughs> yeah, well, you do. Thank you so much for bringing oh, so much fun you. to all of us. Oh, and thank you for having me. On the me. magazine and on your blog. Wonderful thank to see you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I hope you had some fun tonight, and I hope you had fun learning about blogs and seeing some of the, the personalities behind them. You know, it, that's what I love when I make the rounds at these expos is you finally get to meet the bloggers who are out there talking on the topics that you're interested in. I hope that you check out their blogs. Stop by. I think you kind of have a blogger center, don't you, up in the um, exhibit hall. So you can go by. You'll recognize them now and come by and say hi. But, of course, we can't leave until I give away our final prizes because I just love giving away prizes. And the first one we have. Now, one of the things that I do, in addition to my Genealogy Gems podcast and the Family History Genealogy Made Easy podcast, is I also do a monthly podcast for Family Tree Magazine. But they are becoming more and more online as well and adapting to the new way of things. And they put out some fantastic products. The first one is an international genealogy passport. This is your ticket to tracing your roots to the old country. It's got the hot-linked websites right here on it, step-by-step search guides for genealogy overseas. If you're looking to do international, this is a fantastic resource. Do you have a number for us? Sure do. All right. All right. Our number is 566550. Who's going overseas? Oh, we have a winner. I think you'll really enjoy that one. And this one is very similar. It's called the Passport to Europe. This one covers all the main countries, also Jewish roots, immigration records. I believe this is searchable. If you've ever had Family Tree Magazine, they have the pull-out guides and things all included in here. So who's our winner? I've got 566549. Oh, right in front. Oh, this was a lucky row right here. (laughs) Congratulations. So that's the passport to Europe. Enjoy that. And I have a couple things, too. First of all, although my podcasts are free, we do have a premium membership that we do that's on the genealogygems.com website. So I always tell people, if you're enjoying the free podcast, you're going to love the premium podcast. And it's an annual membership. And this, we have an annual membership, which includes, um, there are members-only podcast episodes that are exclusive for members, as well as, if you've been attending any of my classes this weekend, like the Google classes and stuff, There's dozens of videos that show everything we've been doing in class step by step. So you're going to have a great resource to go home and then follow along with me online and watch the videos and get it all set up yourself. Who's going to be an annual premium member? 566521. And there he goes. Congratulations. Good. And he's been in my classes, so he's heard me talking about it. Awesome. And finally, my big excitement in coming to the expo was that last week we launched a brand new, published a brand new DVD. She knows I've been buried in my office working on this. About six months ago, I did Google Earth for genealogy. And I didn't know at the time that this was volume one, but it is now volume one because 
I was having so much fun with it, and I was blown away at what you could do with Google Earth, which is a free program you can download. I've been talking about it in class. And bring all those documents together, all those photographs together, and really bring it into visual. So I had to create volume two. This one gets you into church records, it helps you identify photographs, um, does land records, but this one pulls it all together. And then you can actually create a recorded video history tour. So it's a video series, and you can again watch them step by step. And who is going to be going home and flying the globe? And you're the man, because you've been in my classes, too. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Well, it has been a long day. I appreciate you guys coming in here and being part of the live show. This is a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Be sure to go to genealogygems.com, because this will be recorded, and it's going to be posted. You will hear yourself applauding in the background. So have a wonderful evening, and we will see you tomorrow at the Expo.